This is my M4 Mac Mini, which I've managed to shrink by 25% in size and a whopping 40% in weight. Now, this little thing can run off a compact power adapter or even a USB-C power bank. Oh, and flipping the power button to the top feels so much more natural now. Imagine having an ultra-mobile workstation you can take anywhere. Pair this with a travel router. And you've got yourself a full Mac experience on your iPad or even connect it to something like the MetaQuest 3 for an immersive multi-monitor setup. I started with a base model M4 Mac Mini 16GB RAM and turned it into what might just be the world's most powerful Mac in this size. Meet the Mac Nano. Curious about how it performs and how I pulled this off? Stick around, hit that like button and keep watching. If you're into tech and mods, don't forget to subscribe. And if you miss my Game Boy Advance mods, check those out too. It's some fun stuff. So, does the Mac Nano perform as well as the original? I ran some benchmarks and honestly, it blew me away. The results were almost identical to the standard Mac Mini, thanks to that M4 chip being a beast. But what really matters isn't just the numbers, it's how it handles real-world tasks. Since there are already tons of reviews for the regular Mac Mini out there, I decided to dig deeper into how my mods affect performance. The key here was replacing the internal power brick. The original 155 watt supply was overkill for the base model. After checking Apple specs, I found it only needs up to 65 watt. So, I went on a mission to find a 65 watt USB C power delivery solution. For those who are not familiar, PD is a smart charging standard that lets devices talk to chargers to safely get more power over USB C. According to the PD standard, 20 volt is the minimum voltage needed to hit up to 65 watt. I found this neat little USB-C port from Witron that could do exactly that. If the charger can't handle 20 volt, it just negotiates the highest possible voltage, making my Mac Nano flexible for smaller power banks. More on that later. Here's where things got tricky. The power supply of the Mac Mini is listed at 12.6 volt output. Finding a buck converter that could step down 20 volt to exactly 12.6 volt was almost impossible. Most converters are built for 12 volt and come with big heat sinks. Luckily, the power supply in fact varies between 12.2 to 12.4 volt depending on the load, so 12 volt should work just fine. I found this tiny converter on AliExpress claiming it could handle up to 96 watt, though I'm skeptical. It was small enough, so I gave it a shot. I soldered it in and tested it with a USB power meter and an electronic load. The output held steady between 12.2 and 12.4 volt, handling 65 watt without any issues. It even hit 76 watt briefly but couldn't sustain it. I won't bore you with the details of power conversion rates and voltage ripples, maybe another video for that? So, this converter delivers all the power the Mac needs. I modeled a new case, 3D printed a few to find the best fit and put everything back together. Then, I powered it on and held my breath. It worked! 
first test, I open multiple terminal windows to generate random data and max out the CPU. The Mac Nano ran at full tilt without thermal throttling, pulling about 35 watt. So I went on adding a GPU workload with Cinebench. Power spiked to around 55 watts and the M4 chip drew around 30 watts. It completed the task with a 11% performance drop. Testing CPU performance with Cinebench while running Blender for GPU workload showed a greater 26% drop. My M4 Pro Mac Mini with 64GB of RAM also saw a similar performance dip under the same stress, so the newer power supply and chassis may not be the culprit. Next, I started testing it with external devices connected. Plugging in a travel router, a USB-C powered monitor, and an external SSD while running the Blackmagic SSD test, Blender and Cinebench pushed power to around 70 watt. It finished the task, though the scores were lower. This showed that the bug converter can replace the original power supply without causing much performance loss. I also ran the Mac Nano for more than 6 hours, with a steady 50 watt workload. It didn't seem to overheat or stress the bug converter at all. If you're okay with sacrificing some performance for portability, enabling low power mode in macOS caps consumption at around 35 watt, making it possible to use smaller 30 watt power banks with lesser load. Of course, you'll trade off some speed, but even then, it still beats the M1 Mac Mini in most aspects except single core CPU performance. One thing I learned quickly is that you'll need the right power supply. At least 65 watt for full performance or 30 watt with low power mode. Always check the supported voltage and current before using it with the Mac Nano. It gets even trickier when picking the right power bank. Since the Mac Nano only consumes 1 to 2 watts when idle, some power banks might shut off due to the low draw, like my 30 watt Bacious. My Xiaomi 165 watt power bank has been a lifesaver. It handles up to 20 volt 3.25 amp and keeps the Mac Nano running at full potential without shutting off. If your power bank does shut off, you can plug in an external device to keep it on, though that'll drain the battery faster. Oh, and there's this annoying whistling noise from the buck converter when it's not under heavy load. It's not loud, but it's there. I tried tweaking capacitors and inductors without luck. Next time, maybe a better converter? So, is shrinking a Mac Mini worth it? For me, absolutely. It's an incredible feeling to have this much power in something so small. It has no problem running local LLMs, handling video editing, or even some retro gaming. It can even run Mac OS on a VR machine. If you're thinking of trying this, remember the risks. This converter wasn't made for the M4 Mac Mini and might affect its lifespan. There's also an extra cable between the power supply and mainboard that I ignored, possibly for temperature sensing. If you know more, drop a comment. For now, I'm thrilled with the Mac Nano. I'm considering doing a detailed making of video and maybe even sharing the 3D CAD files. Let me know if you're interested and what you think about my Mac Nano. Before you go, check out my Instagram for more gadget updates and other fun stuff. It's a mix of tech, retro games and anime. If you want to see more projects like this, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.